Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube and if you haven't already done so, this would be a great time to hit the subscribe button. This is the second video as part of my automating manual tasks series. Why am I doing this? Because I do these type of uh, little things like I write snippets of code to make me more efficient so I don't do all kinds of manual tasks and I thought maybe you can benefit from that knowledge. In part one of this, I showed you how you can extract uh, text or selected emails from your Outlook inbox, but most of us have Gmails nowadays, so why not just have a look at how we can extract this information from Gmail. Now, why do we need to do that? Your Gmail has a great search, and you can search for uh, you know where the emails are coming from. For example, uh, all the emails from my mom. You know, Go ahead and search for that, and it's very easy for you to extract that. The reason why I want to do this is if you're interested in, for example, doing sentiment analysis on a bunch of text, you can go and find some text somewhere else in uh, you know, standard data sets. But what if you have all the data in your own inbox and you would like to extract that information? Maybe all the emails coming from your uncles and cousins and aunts and family members or non-family members, whatever, uh, you just extract them and tag them and store them in uh, a data frame and you can use that for sentiment analysis, for example. Yeah, so that's just an uh, example I just thought of uh, my my head right now. But there may be any uh, there may be other reasons why you would like to do this. So let's go ahead and jump in without talking any further. These are just a few lines of code, so I promise the video is not going to be very long. So let's go ahead and jump into the code now. Okay, here is my code. I'm going to share this code with you, so don't bother writing it down right now. Please look for the link to my GitHub page or to this code down in the description box. So first of all, before even fetching your emails, you need to make sure that your Gmail settings are correct and your, uh, and your uh, Google settings are also adjusted accordingly. So there are two steps that you need to make sure. One, make sure you enable IMAP in your Gmail address, sorry, Gmail settings. And part two, if you have two-factor authentication, if not, this doesn't um, uh, this doesn't apply to you. But most of us, at least I have two-factor authentication. So Gmail requires you to create an application-specific password if that's the case. Because when you do that, it doesn't know where you're logging in from. And then it's like, hey, uh, uh, I, I, you need a different password. Anyway, you need to set these two things up. So first of all, how do you set up your IMAP in your uh, Gmail settings? Let me go to my Gmail. So you go to your Gmail like normal, click up here on the settings button and click on all settings when it shows up. Yeah, so when you go here, it comes up with settings and click on all settings. It opens up uh, a window like this. Now here, go to forwarding and port, uh, sorry, pop slash IMAP. And then when you scroll down, you should see there is a status IMAP. Most probably it's disabled in your case, so go ahead and enable that. Okay, so that's the only thing you need to do right here. Next, you need to set a password for your application. So for that, just go to your Google account settings. Okay, this is your Google account, and then click on the settings. Go to your Google account settings and click on security. Okay, and now, you see here, signing into Google, there is two-step verification. I enabled that two-step verification. Probably most of you did that too. In app passwords, you probably should not see anything. I have one because I enabled it for my Python. So click on this. And of course, it's going to ask you for your, uh, for your uh, password. Just to confirm, I got my message right here. It's trying to confirm that it is me. So let me go ahead and complete that process. So it's secure and yes, it's me. Let me go ahead and finish that, okay? So you will come to a page that looks like this and here, go ahead and select mail as your application and then a device, you're not trying to log on to like iPhone or any of these, just click other and custom name and give a custom name. In my case, I gave my custom name as Python right there. When you do that, it generates a password and copy that and use that as part of your uh, authentication. That's it. So these are the two prerequisites. So let me go ahead and open our uh, Python. So that's that's the two steps you need to complete. And once you have your email and password, obviously, in my case, I don't want you to see my email and password. Obviously, I don't want you to see my password here. So I save that as part of my YAML uh, file called do not share credentials.yml. How does this YAML file look like? So let me open 
the credentials.yml right there yaml and this is how it should look like so let me i'm not sure how to zoom in here let's say zoom zoom uh, control oh, okay so control mouse wheel up okay so my yaml file is like this user colon whatever your email is password colon whatever your password is remember this is the password that you set for this application once you have this you're all set let's go ahead and close it and now let's jump into the code this part is pretty straightforward i'm going to use two primary libraries one is imaplib and the other one is email to kind of extract our relevant text from the emails so let's go ahead and run these two lines I'm uh, working on Python 3.9, pretty uh, pretty much the latest as, uh, as of at least uh, uh, towards the end of February 2022. Uh, let's go ahead and also import my uh, YAML library because we are going to read this YML file and then read the content route, uh, down here. So let's open the file, go ahead and read the content, and you know how the content looks like, right? User name and password. So that's exactly what we need to set. My user is in my credentials, uh, which is nothing but the YAML file that we opened. Go ahead and look for user, and that's my uh, user, and the password is the password right next to it. So let us go ahead, uh, sorry. I should run that line first and come down here. There you go. Now my username and password are recorded and let us define our IMAP URL. For Gmail, it's going to be imap.gmail.com. This technique that I'm showing you, it also works for other Yahoo and Hotmails if you still have those accounts. But in this case, I'm showing you a Gmail example. So there you go. That's my IMAP URL. Next step, I need to uh, connect with Gmail service and then enter the username password. So how do we connect? I'm going to use the SSL connection right there from IMAP4. So imaplib.imap4ssl connect to my Gmail account. So let's run that line. Now it's connected to the Gmail client and now I need to just provide my login and user, uh, username and password, which we stored under these two variables. So let's go ahead and provide those. And it says, okay, it's authenticated, success. I'm in my inbox. Well, I'm in my mail. Now I need to set my uh, inbox as the mail uh, folder that I want to search. So let's go ahead and select my mail. Go ahead and select inbox. Okay. So my mail, uh, did I use that variable? My message. Okay. Sorry. I, I just wrote this uh, code and uh, just want to make sure everything is... Uh, makes sense before I share it with you. Okay. So now we selected uh, the inbox and now it's time to move on and uh, set some filter filters you don't need to set any filters you can just search through all your emails that it actually read i think how many emails do i have like 413 i guess emails that we have in the inbox but uh, i would like to only extract the ones that came from this email address which is my dummy hotmail address that i just created yeah so from this address so let's go ahead and provide that as a key and this is the value because i am going to take my mail right there object this my mail is an object right that we created within that my mail object go ahead and search for from pnstrenu at hotmail.com is the value so when i run this line it's going to fetch the data uh, the first variable I, i'll just ignore all, everything that we need is the second one, right? Within the data, I'm going to capture everything that came from bnstrenu at hotmail.com. I hope so far so good. Now, let us go ahead and look at my mail ID, uh, create a my mail ID list because I think it's important for you to see this. Let's go to variable explorer. Okay, so I want you to focus on this data part, because this is what we just extracted. So the data is 405, 406, and 412. So of all the 413 emails I have in my inbox, the emails that came from bnstrenu at hotmail.com have IDs of 405, 406, and 412. These are the three times I sent myself an email from this inbox to this other, uh, to my Gmail account. So our goal is to extract information contained within these three emails. So that's exactly what we are trying to do right here. Yeah, my mail ID list is nothing but 405, 406, and 412. That's my mail ID list. 
I created this list because I can iterate through each email now. Okay, so let us go back to uh, our code part here, and I am going to define an empty, uh, empty list called messages. This is where I'm going to capture all the messages from these three different emails. So for I in or for num in mail ID list, which is our 405 and so on, these, these three emails, go ahead and fetch the data, okay? And uh, when you use this RFC 822, again, you can dig into this if you, if you are curious about understanding every little detail here. I'm just showing you this as a tool that you can use to, uh, to, to extract your emails. If you want to understand this email extraction and all that stuff in detail, you better research exactly what that is. Basically, that returns the whole message, including the body and the headers and everything. That's what that uh, part means. So I am going through each and one of my emails and appending that. So at the end of this, you will have a list of messages right there, a list that, uh, uh, let's go back to Variable Explorer my messages right there, MSGS, we have three mails. We know that we have three messages anyway. Okay, so these are my messages. And uh, now the next part would be going through each and one of these. In fact, let me open these messages right there. You can see that this is a list, that's a list, and that's a list. We have three messages. And within each message, I have a tuple right there. And then uh, the second part, uh, uh, just ignore that and within this tuple we have like okay that's the mail id 405 rfc 822 we already looked at it and then this part is what we need to extract down here that contains the body that contains everything else okay let's uh jump back in here and how do we extract that so now we have uh, messages so for each message in my messages for I in message, I don't know, it, I just called it response part, that response part in the message, if that response part is a tuple, which it is, we just saw that, right? It's a tuple. If it is tuple, then my message is, I'm using the library email. Remember, we imported this in, uh, email library for a reason. So I'm using that. And within that, I'm using a method called message from bytes. This is important. There is a message from string. There is a message from bytes. And why am I using message from bytes? Let's go back here and look at my messages. Look at the tuple, this tuple. Let's open it. And this part, the second part right here is bytes. This is not string. This is a way to tell. Let's come back. This is a way of telling your email right there that, hey, use uh, extract this information from bytes. And this is the part that we want to extract it. And you know this, this is the second, uh, this is the, uh, this is the tuple part that we want to extract. So this contains my message. And after that, it's just a matter of printing now that you ex uh, extracted it. So let's actually run up to this point so you can see exactly what it looks like. So my message, let's look at my message my message right there. Uh, I think you, uh, this is an object, so obviously you cannot see it. So this my message is an object. And from this object, we need to extract subject, for example, we need to extract the from where it came from, and the body of the text. So that's what uh, the print statements down here actually are doing. So within you, uh, this my message object, go ahead and get the subject, go ahead and get this uh, from and go ahead and get the body. Typically, you can actually print the body as uh, uh, getting a payload. And did I write somewhere about payload? Uh, a message object, for example, this object right there has two components. One is uh, it consists headers and it consists payloads. And we need to extract the payload that actually contain the body, contains the body of the email. So that's why uh, we are trying to we are trying to extract the body down here, and. Uh, this part, again, if uh, I'm going a little deep, I didn't uh, intend to go this deep, but uh, since I'm going to share the code, it may as well make sense uh, for me to explain this part. So because our message has multiple parts, uh, we are going th through each part of the message. And if it is a text slash uh, plain, let's go ahead and print it. That's what we are trying to do here. Uh, in fact, if I just go here and print the content, get content type, it should say I have multi-part, 
alternative text plain and text HTML. I'm like, okay, just look at that. And if it is text plain, go ahead and print it out. That's all I'm trying to do. So let us run these lines and end the video so you can see what it looks like on the screen. So there you go. So I got three emails. This is the latest one I just sent. So subject, another mail with another subject uh, came from this email ID that I just uh, recently created. And uh, I should, uh, I should have uh, commented that part. So it looks simple and straightforward. There you go. Okay. So subject from and the body is hi there, subject, body, and so on. Now, I just printed this on the screen. Obviously, you can easily capture this into a Pandas data frame, convert that into Excel. So you have like all your data in Excel or just leave it in Pandas data frame if you plan on using it right away for some sort of a natural language processing uh, uh, task. I hope you found this to be useful. And if you like these type of little tricks that make uh, your life easy in terms of automating these type of manual tasks, just leave that in the comments. Like, what would you like to see? Thank you guys and let's meet again in the next video.